Okay. First two problems here. By the way, order may be shuffled tomorrow. So the first two problems might not be the graphs. They might be somewhere else in the test tomorrow. But this is what we do. Easiest points on the test, absolute easiest points on the test is what? Domain is all real numbers. If anything else, you should be able to get those two points. Nobody should get lower than a 2%. <laughs> okay. Um, in this particular problem, what is H? Negative 2, right? We change the sign. And what is K? Zero. Which one determines my asymptote? K. So K determines my asymptote. I'm going to draw my asymptote in. Some of you did not use a different color. Please use a different color. If you don't have your own different color, I have about 30 up here that you can choose from. Okay? So borrow one if you don't have one of your own. What do I write on the line for asymptote? Y equals zero. If you just put zero there, you got marked wrong. It must be an equation. Okay? So if K is what gives me my asymptote, what does H tell me? H goes in the middle of my XY chart. Now, some people struggled with their XY chart here. I expect two values on one side of negative 2 and on the other side. Okay, now how do I figure out what goes on my y side? Plug them in. So if I plugged in negative 4, I have 3, parentheses, 2 divided by 3. I think you can use your fraction button there if you want to. To the, I recommend always putting your exponent in parentheses when you're typing it in. So negative 4 plus 2, and here I say I recommend that and I didn't even type it in. There we go in parentheses. Otherwise, it will treat that 2 like a k value instead of an h value and take it out of the exponent. And I get 6.75. Now I just arrow back, change the negative 4 to a negative 3. I get 4.5. Change the negative 3 to a negative 2. I get 3. Negative 2 to a negative 1. I get 2. And finally, to a 0. I get 1.3333333. Do I expect to see an XY table? Yes. Including a table of XY values. Yes, I expect to see it. <coughs> Excuse me as I die. All right. Negative 4, 6.75. Negative 3, 4.5. Negative 2, 3, <clears throat> negative 1, 2, and 0, 1 1.3. So my graph goes something like that. I do expect to see an arrow on both ends to show that it goes on forever in both directions. Some people only put an arrow on this side. I would like to see the arrow on both sides. What is the one thing that my graph cannot do? Cross that asymptote. Okay. Uh, last thing, what do I need to fill out? My range. Y is always related to my K value, which is 0. Is Y greater than 0 or less than 0? Greater than. And why is it greater than? Because it's above my asymptote. Okay? Just out of curiosity, does this graph represent growth or decay? Decay. Why? Because it's getting closer to my asymptote, but also because my B value is less than 1. Right? Two different ways you can tell there. All right, number two, what is my H value? <clears throat> Zero. What is my K value? So what's my asymptote? Y equals 4. Again, if you just write 4, you will lose that point there. Can you afford to lose any points? I wouldn't want to. For something as silly as that, I wouldn't want to lose that point. Okay, XY table, what number goes in the middle of my XY table this time? Zero. Zero. So I need negative 1 and negative 2, and I need positive 1 and positive 2. So, uh, hang on a sec. Okay, so negative 2 times 
E, again, it should be near your LN button somewhere. You know, it's kind of hard to tell that. Negative 2 E to the what? Negative second. Close my parentheses because I'm moving out of the exponent now into my K value, which is plus 4. So that's what it should look like in my calculator. And I get 3.7. Again, I'm not super concerned with how you round off in your XY table because as detailed as our graph is, we're not going to know the difference whether you call it 3.7, 3.6, etc. Um, okay, so now I'm going to arrow back. I'm going to change that negative 2 to a what? Negative 1. 3.3-ish. Change the negative 1 to a 0. And I get 2. Now change it to a 1. I get negative 1.4, and finally change it to a 2, and I get negative 10.8. Okay, so negative 2, 3.7, negative 1, 3.3, 0, 2, 1, negative 1.4, 2, negative 10.8 doesn't fit on my graph, but... That means that it's going to be crossing down around here, right? If my graph were to continue. So my graph needs to behave as though it is going like that. Make sense? Is that growth or decay? It's moving away from the asymptote, so it is... Growth, it is growth reflected in this case because it's going down instead of up. What is my range? Y is what? Less than because it's below my asymptote. And what is it less than? Four. Okay. All right. Any questions about the graphs before I move on? Yes. Because as you move from left to right, you're getting further away from the asymptote. As you get further away from the asymptote, see as I'm traveling here from left to right, if I'm moving away from the asymptote, that's not growth, or that's not decay, that's growth. Okay? If I'm getting closer to the asymptote, that's decay. Always traveling from left to right. All right, write the equation of the exponential function shown for the given B value. Now, this one, you need to know an equation or a formula, but the formula is kind of given to you, sort of, in these problems, right? Because you have an A value, so let's see, I need Y equals A value times B, and then I have X minus H, and then this one didn't have a K value, but it would be out at the end. So do you see how I used that problem to help me come up with the formula? Makes it easier to memorize. So what letters do I need? I need A, B, H, and K. What's the easiest one to get? B, because it's given to you. Always will be given to you. What's the next easiest one? K, because K is my asymptote. My asymptote is at negative 4, so K is negative 4. Now, H and A are both related to whichever of the two points I consider my center. My preference always is that you take the center point as being the one that is closer to the asymptote. Okay? So I'm going to choose this one as my center. And what are the coordinates of that point? Negative 1, negative 1. Well, guess what? This right here, the X value, is my H value. Yes? Good answer. My A value then is the distance between that point and my asymptote. So how far is that point from the asymptote? Three. It's three. Now the last thing I have to check before I'm done is whether this A value is negative or positive. How am I gonna tell whether the graph is above the asymptote or below the asymptote? Is my graph above or below the asymptote? Above, if it is above, my A value is positive. If it is below the asymptote, my A value is negative. So now I just put all this stuff into here and I'm done. So let's see, three times
times 2 to the x minus h. So I always have to change the sign of h. So negative 1 would look like a plus 1. And then k is negative 4. There's my equation. Done. Not too bad. All right, next one. Easiest one to find is b because it's given 1 half. What's the next easiest one? K, because it's my asymptote. My asymptote is at 6, so K is 6. Now I need to identify my center, so I'm going to pick which point is closer to the asymptote, the bottom one or the top one? Bottom one or top one? Top one. Coordinates of that point are what? 2, 3. So I put the 2 for what letter? H, and then I have to talk about how far this point is from the asymptote. It looks like it's 3. Now, is that 3 a positive 3 or a negative 3? Why is it negative? Because the graph is below the asymptote. A lot of people miss that negative sign there. So, putting it all together, negative 3 times 1 half to the x, what? Minus 2 plus 6. Most groups did pretty well on those, except for the one group that left them blank. Any questions on those guys? Again, those might not be problems numbers three and four. They might be seven and eight. Who knows? Yes? A is the distance from your center point to the asymptote. So count how far away it is. Yeah, I know that, but why is it negative? It's negative because the graph itself is below the asymptote. Just like up here, when you're graphing something that has a negative value, it's going to end up below your asymptote. If you have something that's below your asymptote, it came from a negative A value. Well, isn't 3 also? Nope, because my asymptote is down here. The graph is above it. Okay, so if the asymptote is in above, then it's a negative? Think about where the graph is, not where the asymptote is. Here's my asymptote, using my hand. Negative A, positive A. If my curve is down here, A is negative. If my curve is up here, A is positive. Has no, no, it doesn't matter what direction it's going. It all matters, is it below the asymptote or above it? The graph. The graph, the curve itself. Okay. All right, number five messed up, people. I'm kind of proud of that one. Um, almost everybody missed this one. That B value is 5 fourths. What do you know about the number 5 fourths? It's bigger than 1, isn't it? Some people have it in their mind, fraction equals decay. Fraction equals, that's not true. Fraction does not equal decay. This fraction means 1.25, which makes it growth. Be careful. Yes, I'm evil and try and trick you sometimes like that. Because you have to break away from this belief that fractions are always less than one. They're not always less than one. Letter B messed up a ton of people. And it's almost exactly like an example that I gave in the notes. What do you notice about letter B? It's a cubic. Do you see that? In order to even talk about it being exponential growth or exponential decay, it first has to qualify as being exponential. And to be exponential, it has to have an x as an exponent. Does it have an x as an exponent? Mm -hmm. So it is neither. Threw in a cubic to mess with you there. And letter C, I have A, and I have to look at e to the negative first power. If I plug that into my calculator, e to the negative first power gives me 0 0.367. Does that make it growth or decay? That's decay because it's less than 1. So that problem was worth 2 points for each blank for a total of 6 points there. Okay? All right, number 6 also kind of needs a formula, if you will. But it's the exact same formula that you used up here. Just take out the H and the K. All right, 
Same formula you used up here, just take out the H and K. So we're talking about the formula Y equals AB to the X, right? And if you remember when I solved these, the important thing was that the larger exponent was on top. Not the larger number, necessarily, but the larger exponent. So which one of these, the first point or the second point, gives the larger exponent? The second one is. So I'm going to write the second one first because I know it's going to have the larger exponent. So I'm going to say 409.6 equals AB to the fifth. And underneath it, I'll write the other point, 6.4 equals AB to the second. Again, I'm just plugging in the X and the Y from the point into the equation. Now I do my division, 409.6. 409.6 divided by 6.4 is 64. What happens to my A's? Cancel. B to the fifth over B to the second is B to the third. This is an easy cube root. What's the cube root of 64? Four. Okay. What else do I need to find? I now need to find A. So I'm going to take this B value and I'm going to plug it into either that equation or that one. I'm going to choose the bottom one because it's got smaller numbers. So 6.4 is equal to A times 4 squared, or 6.4 equals 16A. Divide by 16, and A equals 6.4 divided by 16 is 0.4. So plugging this all into that equation, Y equals A times b to the x. Yes? Um, where did um, the square root of, like, where did the uh, square come from? Squared where? Here? Yeah, where did that come from? I plugged it into this equation. Okay. And this equation, my x, I'm sorry, my x value and my y value gave it a b squared. Okay? Any other questions on that one? Another six-point question. Yes? Um, for this one, it didn't matter because it, it came out nicely. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. On your test, I wouldn't do any more than three digits past the decimal. Uh -huh. Okay, this one shouldn't have been a big deal because as you saw in my calculator, there wasn't even any reason to go further because it already had stopped it. Okay, any other questions? All right, so the front side here was worth 40 of your 100 points. That might not be the case tomorrow, though, because of the sh moving around. All right. I think we actually were managing to challenge you a little bit with these guys. Now, there's a couple things you need to know. First off, these are six points each. Six points each. So you get two points for identifying what it is. Exponential, linear, quadratic, or neither. None of those. You get two points for your work and two points for your equation if it is linear or exponential. If it is not linear or exponential, meaning it is either quadratic or neither, it will be three points for identifying what kind it is and three points for the work that supports your answer. Okay? So I am expecting work to be shown. You can't just write L-E-N-Q. You just can't do that. All right? So first thing I always try is what? Linear. That's always my first try. How do you get from negative 32 to 16? I'm sorry, to negative 16. You add 16, don't you? What about from negative 16 to negative 8? Add 8. So I know it's not linear because those don't match. From negative 8 to negative 4, and from negative 4 to negative 2. Definitely not linear, right? How do I get from 16 to 8? You subtract 8, don't you? Right? From 8 to 4, subtract 4, subtract 2. Definitely not quadratic, right? So my only options, it's not linear, not quadratic, my only options are neither or exponential. 
How do I determine exponential? I have to set up the fractions. Now, if I just do this, negative 16 over negative 32, and show, oh, that reduces to 1 half, that is not enough to show me that it's exponential. You have to show me that every single fraction all reduces to the same thing. That's what shows me it's exponential. So I also need to show that negative 8 over uh, negative 16 reduces to 1 half, that negative 4 over negative 8 reduces to 1 half, and that negative 2 over negative 4 equals 1 half as well. I need to see that all four of those give me a common result in order for you to show me that it's exponential. So this is the work I'm expecting to show. This is two of the six points is the work to show that. Now, if you already know it's exponential, you don't have to show me this, but you do have to show me this because this is your proof. So this one is exponential. You can either circle it or write it on the line, I don't care. Now, I do need to write an equation for exponential. What's an exponential equation? We've used it on the past several ones. Y equals AB to the X. So, Y equals, how do I find A? Look for where X is zero and take the Y value. So that's my A value, negative 16. What's my B value? One half. You could say 0 0.5 if you want to. To the X, and that's what my equation looks like. Yes? You always pick the 0 for the A value? Yes. Always has to be where X is 0. Uh, by the way, if these did not all reduce to the same thing, then what would I have? Neither, and my work to prove that is to show that the linear is not consistent, the quadratic is not consistent, and these are not consistent. So neither actually has the most work to show to support your answer. Okay? All right, this one. How do you get from negative 5 to negative 3? You add 2. How do you get from negative 3 to positive 3? Add 6. How do you get from 3 to 13? And 13 to 27? Definitely not linear, right? If it was linear, all those would be the same. How do you get from 2 to 6? From 6 to 10? From 10 to 14? What do we have? Quadratic. Do I need to write an equation for quadratic? Nope. So I'm just going to write not applicable right there. And my work supports my answer. So three points for my work, three points for my identification. Questions there. Okay, next one. How do I get from 0 to negative 2? Subtract 2, right? How do you get from negative 2 to negative 4? From negative 4 to negative 6? And negative 6 to negative 8? That's all the work I need to show. That proves that it is what? Linear. You can circle it or write it, I don't care. Linear, I do need to write an equation. You have to, have to, have to, have to, have to know in a linear equation right now. A linear equation is y equals mx plus b. You have to have that in the back of your mind always. That's something that's got to be very, very easy to pop up with. Now, in the linear equation, this right here is my m value. So negative 2x. What's my b value? Again, just like up there, find where x is 0 right there, not where y is 0, but where x is 0, and that is your b value. So my equation is y equals negative 2x minus 4. Questions there? All right, last one. How do you get from 4 to 6? Plus 2. From 6 to 9? From 9 to 13.5. 4.5. From 13.5 to 20.25, 6.75. Not linear, right? How do you get from 2 to 3? From 3 to 4.5? And from 4.5 to 6.75? Not quadratic. So not linear, not quadratic. So what do I need to do? Set up 
fractions to see if it's exponential. So 6 over 4, 9 over 6. Yes, it always has to go backwards. You can't put 4 over 6 and 6 over 9. Gets you the wrong B value if it's exponential. 13.5 over 9 and 20.25 over 13.5. So these are pretty ugly. Since there's decimals, I'm just going to go to decimal form. Okay, so 6 divided by 4 is 1.5. 9 divided by 6 is 1.5. 13.5 divided by 9 is 1.5. And 20.25 divided by 13.5, guess what? It's 1.5. So what do I have, exponential or neither? Exponential. So I need my y equals a, b to the x. How do I find a? Go where x is 0 and take the 4. What's my b value? 1.5 to the x power. Should not be difficult, right? So what formulas have we needed so far? Y equals AB to the X. We've used over and over again. We've also thrown the H and K on it for a couple problems. And then we've used Y equals MX plus B. Those should be ones that are fairly familiar in your memory. Okay? Do you want me to write those down on a little sheet? So I have... Y equals A, B to the X we've used. We've used it with the H and the K. You can't see that. And we've used Y equals MX plus B. Yes? Y equals MX plus B is only used for linear, right? Yes, that's only used here when you get a linear one. Yep. This one is used here when you get exponential. This one is used here when you're writing your exponential equation. Um, it's kind of involved in this, but the X or the H and the K you're going to see in these graph ones. Okay. And again, I didn't really memorize the H and the K one. I just used the way that these problems were written to remind myself of the way that was that equation goes. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about these formulas. These problems are six points a piece. If you look at my answer key, you get three points for writing this correctly and then three points for the correct answer. Not given much partial credit on that one, so make sure that you're being accurate. So we have three equations. We have y equals a times 1 plus or minus r to the t. That's for anything growing or decaying that is not interest, right? As soon as we have interest, we have A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT. That is interest. And finally, the last one, A equals PE to the RT. And when do we use that one? When it is compounded U-N-D-E-D. -E -D. Compounded what? Yep. Okay. So, a bank pays 1.3% annual interest. So, that tells me I'm down to one of these two equations. It is compounded daily, so I cannot use the PERT when I'm on this one. If $750 is invested for five years, what will be the ending value in the account? So, First half of the problem is setting up A equals 750 times 1 plus, what is my rate? I have to move my decimal twice to the left, so I have to add a zero right there. So 0 0.013 over N, it's compounded daily, so what's N? 365 to the 365 times what? Time is five years. 
That's my first three points right there. Second three points is easy from that point because it's just plugging it into your calculator appropriately. And when you plug that into your calculator, let's see what we get. 750 times 1 plus parentheses, 0 0.013 divided by 365, close two parentheses to the, whoops, wrong button, uh, to the parentheses 365 times 5. Now, I've talked enough about how you're supposed to put that into your calculator that that shouldn't be an issue yet anymore. If it is still an issue, get it figured out by tomorrow. Come talk to me, talk to somebody. Okay? You've got to know how to use your calculator tomorrow. So, this is dollars and cents. So, I have $800 and how many cents? 0.368. What does that round off to? 37. Don't be that guy, and yes, there was someone in this class who put their dollar sign at the end. <sighs> okay. All right. Um, number 12. In 1997, 45 children attended a summer day camp. We're talking about children. Can we have half a child? No. No, you sick person if you put half a child. Attendance has increased by 25% per year since then. How many children attended summer day camp in 2017? Which formula am I using? First, second, or third? First. first. We're not talking about interest, so we're talking about the first one. So, y equals 45 times 1. Am I going to do plus r or minus r? Plus. Why? Because it's increased. What's my R value? 25% would be 0 0.25. To the T, what's the T value? Well, if we started in 97 and it's now 2017, that's how long? 20 years. There's my first three points of the problem. 45 times 1 plus 0.25 to the 20th. Gives me 3903.12. How many children are we talking about? Please do not include that poor 0.12 of a child. Have some respect. Nope, we're talking about number of children, not dollars. Okay. Number 13, $1,200 is invested at a rate of 11% compounded monthly. Which formula? One, two, three. First, second, or third formula? Second. So the amount of money is equal to 1,200 times 1 plus. What's my rate? Zero point one one over n. What's n? Twelve to the twelve times what's the time? Thirty-five. So twelve hundred. Make sure. Woohoo! And I just made that that mistake right there. Make sure you are putting the correct number of zeros because that throws things off if you don't. Notice that I just input twelve thousand into my calculator and the problem is only 1,200, I'm leading myself the wrong way, so I need to take off one of those zeros. All right, times 1 plus parentheses, 0.11 divided by 12, close two parentheses to the parentheses, 12 times 35. Big number, 55411. Now, this one is dollars and cents, so 0 0.260, that would be 0 0.26. Put a comma if it's over 1,000 and a dollar sign, just like you learned when you were in second grade, and we've got our answer. Questions there? Again, this whole section right here is worth 18 and 18. Oh. 18 and 18 are 36, right? So this whole section is worth 36 points. That if you know the formulas, it's a piece of cake. If you don't know the formulas, you're screwing yourself over tomorrow, right? So either do it or don't. Um, all right, a new motorboat costs $8,000. The value of the boat 
decreases by 7.5% each year. What is the value of the boat after nine years? Which formula, one, two, or three? One, it doesn't say anything about interest, and this one's the only one that you can use a minus sign in. So if you've got decreases, you're in this one. So y equals the current amount times one, this time we're gonna have minus because it's decreases. How do I write the rate? 0 0.075 to the time, which is nine years. There's my first three points of the problem. 8,000 times 1 minus 0 0.075 to the ninth. 3966 point what? Point one two. put a comma if it's over 1,000, and your dollar sign at the beginning, and there's your answer. Got it? Okay. Um, let's see. Joan wants to end up with $25,000. Remember this one? This is the one like Bill who was saving for his kid's college, right? So 25000 is not the P value. It's the A value. So $25,000. Now, I have to see. Am I, am I using the PERT formula or the regular compound? This one is compounded semi-annually. So I'm using this guy right here. So 25,000 is equal to the principal times one plus, what's the rate? 8%, what's that as a decimal? 0 .08. 0 0.08 over N, compounded semi-annually. What does that mean N is? Two. two. Semi-annually is twice a year. What if I said quarterly? Four. Four times a year. Okay, um, 0.08 over 2 to the 2 times the time. What's the time? 5. So there's my first three points. Now, this is the problem where I have to solve this part first. So this is 1 plus 0.08 divided by 2 to the 2 times 5. 5.408. That's not bad. Let me make sure I did that right. Uh, nope, sorry, I forgot a parenthesis. 1.4802442.85, yada, yada. Now, what's the rule about this one? Don't hit clear. Just start typing. $25,000 divided by what? The previous answer. How do you get to your previous answer button? Well, it's right here. If you have that Casio calculator. You don't even have to press second to get to it. It's right there. And I get 16889 point what? One zero. Put your comma and your dollar sign and you're good. By the way, I have not been saying this because I've been kind of rushing through these to make sure we get through it, but make sure your answer makes sense. She should not have to invest more than $25,000 in order to get $25,000. She should have to invest less. If you've got something decreasing in value, it better be worth less as your answer. If you have $1,200 and you are investing it and getting interest on it, you better end up with more than $1,200. Okay, make sure that your answer is reasonable for the problem. And the last one, $32,000 invested at 4% compounded continuously. Which formula? One, two, or three? Three. So I have A equals 32,000 times E to the rate. What's the rate? 0 0.04 times 28. So 32,000 times E to the 0 0.04 times 28. Notice how I typed in that one a little bit differently. I didn't need to do the parentheses there. Uh, 98075, that's good because it's bigger than 32,000. Should be growing. Point what? 334, what does that round off to? 33 cents. Put your comma and your dollar sign if it's bigger than 1,000. 
and there you go. So how are these ones graded? Three points for the equation, three points for the answer. Okay? All right, happy studying.